Hi everyone, uh, a warm welcome to the second webinar on steel wire rope uh, here at Eindhoven, the clean room cranes office with uh, with a nice back view on, on their workplace. Uh, today will be the second webinar in a series we have this year. Uh, a couple of weeks ago we had the first one on the basics of steel wire rope with our expert Alan Bauman and he will guide you today um, to uh, high performance ropes and rotation resisting ropes. So we will guide you during the next 40 minutes. Um, some things, uh, uh, you're all mute. If you have a question, please type in, in, in the chat functionality and we will uh, do the question and answers after his presentation. So we have more about 15 minutes for that. Um, this session will be recorded and we will send it to you afterwards uh, as well as uh, some of the slides or maybe all the slides. I think we do all the slides uh, and uh, not all the questions can be answered, but will be done afterwards. So let's switch to a little bit of introduction. Uh, who did not join the last time. Uh, we're part of the Axel Johnson International Company, which is a privately actively held company that acquires uh, uh, industrial other companies and they have six strong business lines, as you can see. And on the left side, you see that we are operating on the lifting solutions part. And um, well, I think you all uh, are aware of one of those uh, brands in, in this sheet. Uh, uh, we operate as a group of companies with a strong local brand and presence. And uh, well, these are our brands uh, in Europe. And then we have a final slide um, and all the companies uh, as a group, we are Europe's leading steel wire rope and lifting solutions provider. And as you can see, we have a big coverage in, uh, in almost every country in Europe, uh, even in uh, Canary Island, which is really nice. And uh, <laughs> yeah, never been to there, but maybe next time. <laughs> So this is a, just a small introduction about the company and I think you all want to know more about Alain's presentation. So I hand over to Alain and I wish you a present of a, a nice presentation. So a uh, very warm welcome from Alain, Alain. Alain Bauman and uh, well, I'm a Flemish Belgian Alain. and I'm, uh, I'm uh, well, 35 years now in let's say the same company, let's say Menens Certex, yeah. I'm uh, doing uh, um, investigations, advice, climb into cranes, uh, even if I'm 61 now, uh, uh, doing uh, reports. We have a laboratory to investigate uh, on uh, steel wire ropes and so on. Uh. So if you have a question, just call us, we do our best. These are the subjects we're going to uh, tackle in this uh, webinar. Uh, for those people who didn't see the first presentation about the basics, we just uh, rehearse a little bit what we saw last time. Um, if you really want to see the first uh, webinar, you just click on the link or we send you the link and you can see the first webinar. It's basically about uh, steel wire wires, ropes and constructions. Yeah? So we're going to elaborate on high performance ropes today. What is the difference with the general purpose ropes we saw last time? Uh, the advantages of these high performance ropes, uh, the applications. Yeah. And then a uh, second chapter is the rotation resistant ropes, a completely different kind of rope. What is it? Why? Classifications and applications. And then if you have questions about uh, things going wrong uh, on your crane or what you just tap it into uh, uh, the chat and we do our best if we can after the presentation to answer your questions immediately if not we're going to do it uh, later on this is uh, just to tell you also there will be next uh, webinars uh, after the summer we're going to talk about inspection and discard of ropes uh, uh, um, um, magnetic rope testing. There will be a separate uh, webinar coming up for uh, ridging arrangements about sheaves and drums. We're going to do a special uh, webinar about uh, lubrication of your rope. 
uh, and end terminations. So um, at your service also for other coming up uh, webinars. OK, let's start again with what we saw last time. Um, a little bit basics, let's say. This is how normally a wire rope looks like. You have a rope which consists out of some strands, six or eight or more, and in these strands you have your uh, separate wires. If you look on the right side, you have the outer wires, the outer wires in one strand, which uh, come into contact with sheaves and with your drum. Um, inside the strand, you have the inner wires. You see them in red there. Yeah. And in the center, in each center of your strand, you have the center wire. So six or more from these strands are surrounded, uh, uh, the surrounding the uh, uh, core wire. So uh, there is an independent uh, uh, wire core rope inside uh, your six strands. Yeah? So we explained last time how a wire rope is made. We do that in two steps. The first step is making strands. So here you can see on the machinery the stranding, and then we put some lubrication into the strand. Yeah, and the second step is that we take six or more strands. Yeah, we put it on another machine, and then we do the closing of the wire. So we put six strands around a core. Yeah, and you see the preformation. The preforming is the helix we do with each strand before it goes into the knot so that uh, the preformation makes that the rope will be uh, eased and will be flexible. Yeah. So general purpose ropes, like we explained last time, uh, generally often used, very often used, are six strand ropes. Like you see here, you have the six times 36 Warrington seal with the independent rope core on your left side, or there are some guys who prefer a fiber core. So uh, um, let's say a, a man-made fiber uh, core inside, which uh, will have the advantage that you can uh, have inside your rope a certain amount of grease. Uh, so there will be a greasing coming automatically uh, during your lifetime. And you see the advantages of the steel core, the disadvantages of a uh, rope of plastic core, but we explained that last time. You also could use eight strand ropes. These ropes have eight strand on the outside. You see there's a little more uh, complicated uh, inner wire rope core you need then to fill up this space, but you have the advantage that the rope is much rounder. Yeah, it comes more into contact with your sieve, sheaves, so you're going to have lower contact uh, pressures, uh, less wear into your grooves and a more flexible rope, so it's normally going to last longer. So keep that in mind eight stranded ropes, more flexible and uh, uh, a little bit more expensive, of course, because it's difficult or more difficult uh, to produce. And you need more different kinds uh, of wires. So but it's always interesting to have a longer lifetime on your frame. <coughs> and then we talked about the rotation resistant ropes. These are ropes where the core is inverted. And we said every uh, rope which has more than 10 strands on the outside would normally be a rotation resistant rope, yeah? a non rotating rope, or as in French, anti giratoire. So the core is inverted, yeah? and this is especially uh, useful for very high hoisting, like applications in tower cranes, mobile cranes, or if you only have one part hoisting, then you normally need a rotation resistant ropes. And then we had this uh, overview where to use, let's say, uh, the general purpose ropes uh, on winches, six stranded or eight stranded. On overhead cranes, you see six times 36 or eight times 36, uh, some uh, uh, more flexible ropes. Uh, on container cranes, you can see the uh, eight 
stranded ropes, which last longer on container cranes. Um, you have a special kind of uh, rope for elevators. Yeah, it's uh, eight times 19 in seal with dual tensile, so with two different uh, wire uh, classes with the uh, soft uh, wires on the outside uh, so that you don't have uh, wear in your elevator uh, machinery. And uh, at the right side, you have the tower cranes with, uh, or let's say, the non rotating, rotation resistant ropes, mobile cranes. And uh, if you need advice where to use what, just call us. We give you an idea what is useful on all your different uh, applications. Then we explained also the difference between left and right hand ropes. Uh, um, we explained that there are two uh, different kinds of lays, ordinary lay and Lang's lay. Here you can see the explanation. Uh, so uh, you see right and left hand uh, uh, lay and Lang's and ordinary lay. Yeah? It depends on which uh, lay you have on the right and on the left, but also look at the lay in the strand because strands can be also left and right handed strand, and then you can close them up in ordinary or Langsley. We explained why you really need uh, right and left hand ropes. Huh? If you put a, a load on a six or eight stranded rope, this rope will open up. So you get, a, a, let's say, a torque or a moment in your rope. And uh, the more load you put on uh, the rope, the more torque you will get, and the more rotation you will get on your rope. So your load will turn. Huh? And that's why in some applications you need a left and right hand rope so that these moments of the left and the right rope they end up together as zero huh? and then your load will be uh, straight or we stay straight. And that's why in some applications you need so left and right hand rope combined in a set so that you can easily work. You also need left and right handed rope because you have drums and these drums they have left or right cut it grooves, yeah? And on left grooves, you normally need a right handed rope and the other way around. So that's why you really need in some applications, right and left hand ropes, yeah? Okay, now let's talk about high performance ropes. What do we mean with high performance? I explained, but you see here on the left side, you see the general purpose ropes. So standard six strand, eight strand ropes, the non-rotating ropes like 19 times seven. So uh, uh, where the core is inverted or the 35 times seven. This is a kind of, uh, uh, let's say, old type of uh, non-rotating rotating resistant ropes with a lot of uh, strands on the inside and let's say 16 or 18 strands on the outside core inverted. Yeah, there was the first type of uh, non-rotating rope invented uh, for about, uh, let's say, 100 years ago. So this is all classified as general purpose, uh, very often used. They do the job, let's say, but if you want to have something special, yeah, then we could advise to go to the high performance. And what is high performance? Well, you see in six strand ropes, we compacted the uh, outer strands. You don't have round wires anymore, which come in contact with uh, the sheaves or with the drums. So they are die-formed, yeah. Uh, each strand is compacted, and then we make uh, from these compacted strands, we make a six strand compacted rope. We could do the same in eight stranded compacted, as you can see there. And so then eight strands are compacted and we have a eight strand compacted rope. We can go on further doing uh, plastification. So uh, uh, the eight strand plastic infill and compacted. This means that after we have manufactured the uh, inner core, yeah, we plastify the uh, inner core, let's say, and then we put eight strands into this plastic uh, layer, and then we have a, a plastic infill. 
Yeah, we could do it with round uh, uh, wires in the strand, or we could do it with compacted, you know, as you see there on the, the right. Um, more specialized ropes will be 10 stranded uh, ropes with 10 strands on the outside. So you're going to have a rounder rope, stronger, and also with the plastic infill and also compacted. And the rotating resistant ropes, uh, we call them high performance if they have 16 strands on the outside. Eventually, this compacted, yeah, in lengths lay, uh, 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 lay on the outside, let's say, and also if you want with a plastic infill, yeah. So this is the big difference between high performance ropes and general purpose ropes. So what are high performance steel wire ropes? Well, we're going to show you what and how. We have the plastic infill between the strands and core. We have compacted strands, yeah. Sometimes we have hammered strands, I explain later, and sometimes you can go for double parallel ropes, uh, which uh, are much stronger and uh, used in special uh, applications. So first of all, I'm going to talk to you about the plastic infill. If you have this plastic layer between your rope core and your strands, that means that you don't have any more internal wear. So there are no more contacts between the outer strands, wires, and the wires from the steel wire core. Yeah? So this will prevent, let's say, uh, uh, wear in coming from the inside of your core. So there will be no more contacts between strands and strand cores. It keeps the grease, the original grease from the uh, uh, wire core, it keeps it inside. Uh, so don't worry about uh, uh, greasing or things happening inside your rope. Uh, it will stay there till uh, the end of uh, his lifetime. It keeps water and dirt or mud out uh, your uh, wire rope, so don't worry about uh, uh, water applications so you won't get rust from the inside. It keeps uh, all dirt uh, outside and it will increase your stability of the rope. If somebody would try to open up this rope, then the plastic uh, layer will uh, prevent from opening and will keep all the outer strands in place. Yeah? Uh, if you want to regrease or lubricate your rope again, you just have to lubricate or grease your outer uh, strands. So you don't need as much uh, grease or oil to lubricate your rope again. Yeah? That's what about the plastification. Yeah? A second uh, high performance uh, uh, rope making is the compacted strands. Um, you can uh, just compact your strands. As you can see there, uh, you see normally uh, if you make your uh, strand, you have round wires at the uh, outside. Well, you could do the compactation. Uh, you just put uh, the um, strand into a compacting roller machine and they will end up with compacted uh, strand for your outer uh, stranding uh, wires. You can see that you have a higher breaking load. There is more steel into a given diameter. Yeah. And you're going to have much more contact because the rope will be in the end much rounder. So you see you have uh, more uh, square millimeter of contact with sheaves and with uh, drums, which give you a very lower uh, contact pressure which gives you lower wear on your rope, but also lower wear on your sheave groove and on your drums. Very important because sheaves and drums will cost a lot more than your rope. Yeah? You have a higher flexibility with lower stress. Yeah? You have a smoother wearing surface of the rope between drums, sheaves, but also if you have a multi-layer uh, also between the um, uh, ropes themselves. Yeah? If you have a broken wire due to fatigue, yeah, then this broken wire, due to the form uh, of this uh, deformed wire, the broken wire will break, but it will normally stay into the strand. Yeah? So you have one wire 
which doesn't work anymore. Huh? But yeah, if you have a round wire in the old uh, uh, construction, this wire will break and it will come out of the strand. And then when this wire out of the strand goes to sheaves or on your drums, it will be in touch with a neighboring wire. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, yeah, eventually it will disturb his neighboring wires having one, two, three and more uh, uh, wire breaks. So um, this uh, stranding will have a lot of advantages just staying for one wire uh, and you it, it's going to be a, a longer lifetime so it won't disrupt the structure. It's also already so there will be no nothing, let's say, between the rope on multi-layer drums. Huh? That is the compacted strands. A third manner of making ropes more uh, round is the hammering. You have a certain compacted uh, uh, rope which could be hammered and then you see that the roundness of these uh, ropes are um, more round, getting more round, and uh, the rope will get more flexible uh, in um, uh, uh, certain applications. The outer strands are compacted and then hammered, yeah? so you have more contact with sheaves, more contact with uh, 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 drums, and also more contact between the different layers on um, uh, uh, multi-layer uh, drums. Yeah? Um, the cable is even more robust and you have more metallic uh, 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 metal in your section, so the rope will be much stronger. Yeah. Another uh, idea about making ropes more uh, stronger, more flexible is the double parallel, eight and ten strands. What do we mean with that? Well, normally, uh, ropes in eight strand, uh, as you see on the left uh, side, have a six stranded inner core. Yeah? We could double it up just like uh, eight strand on the outside, but also eight strand on the inside, so that every strand will be laying into two underneath laying strands. Yeah? We could do it even with uh, 10 strands, so you have 10 strands on the outside, and then you have the plastic layer, but on the inside you also have 10 strands yeah, which uh, uh, are uh, underneath the uh, 10 outer strands. If you look on the uh, right side, you have this uh, typically 10 strand with a double plastic layer. So you have first a plastic layer between the outer strands and the core, but as you can see in the core, you also have an extra plastic layer uh, which prevents that uh, uh, things will uh, open up and which keeps uh, uh, all uh, properties and all grease uh, inside. Mm -hmm. So these are the double parallel and 10 stranded ropes we advise in some applications. So let's say what are the advantages again of the high performance rope? It will give you an increasing breaking force of about 30% stronger. So look that up because in some uh, applications you go down in diameter, yeah, um, which could have a lot of advantages for your sheath diameter or your drums, yeah. Or if you just leave it like this, you have a rope which is 30% stronger, which gives you a more uh, say a higher safety factor, let's say. For the increasing performance, uh, you normally have a longer lifetime. You could double, triple, or uh, depending on the applications. You will have more cycles because uh, when I explained all uh, these different uh, 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 compactation and plastic uh, infill and grease which stay inside, you could do more tons yeah, without any uh, problem. So you don't have to worry what is happening inside. You just look at the outside. You wait till you have, uh, let's say, uh, the fatigue coming in the outer strands. Um, you have more stable diameters because when this rope is rounder and when it's compacted, huh, you will go down in diameter reduction, but just by wear 
coming on the outside of your uh, um, strands. Yeah? In general purpose ropes, yeah, you have a lot of air into your uh, or between the strands, yeah, and this will give you from the beginning a diameter reduction. So these high performance ropes, they will stay a lot longer on the same diameter, so they don't go down and down and down till the end of their lifetime. You're going to end up with ropes which are in diameter uh, almost the same as from the beginning, and this will give you a lot of advantages for wear in your grooves and uh, on your drum. So less wear on ropes, less wear on sheaves and drums because you have lower contact pressures. More secure, yeah? so there will be no opening or trying to open up the ropes due to rotation and you could uh, um, have higher fleet angles on your installation, you know, the fleet angle uh, rope coming into or under a certain uh, angle into your sheaves. This will um, prevent opening up the rope. Yeah, you can allow more wire breaks before discard. As I explained, one wire which has a, a fatigue problem will stay into the uh, strand. So don't have to worry what's happening inside. You only look on the outside uh, uh, from your rope. Uh, everything else is protected by the plastic layer. I just have to mention this little note. Yeah, you're going to have big uh, advantages with longer lifetimes, more cycles. Uh, if the grooves in sheaves and drums are correct. So if you use um, a high performance rope, yeah, there is no more possibility for this rope to go down in diameter quickly if your sheaves and drum grooves are not correct. Yeah, so you're going to have no good result if you're just using these ropes on very bad grooves and drums. We had some exercises like this. OK, you propose some high performance ropes to a client yeah. and he says, oh, wait, I have a lot of problem with this overhead crane there. You put it on there and let's see if things work. Yeah, we're not going to have a good result if the grooves are badly from shape, if they are worn in. Yeah. So then this kind of high performance rope won't have the possibility to uh, get quickly into a, 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 a thinner diameter and you're going to have uh, a lot of uh, wire ropes immediately coming on the outside. Uh, so don't put it on uh, grooves or sheaves uh, which are completely worn out. OK, let's talk something about price in this high performance. Well, I just uh, make some uh, uh, table here with uh, some price indications, OK? You have six strand if it is, uh, let's say, uh, for a price of 100. You can have general purpose ropes in eight strands, which be about 20 percent, yeah, uh, uh, in price higher, yeah. But you see, the strength will be also about 10 percent higher, uh, 20 percent sometimes. Well, if you go to high performance uh, eight strands with plastic uh, infill and compacted, let's be honest, it's going to be double price, yeah. It's going to be 20%, uh, percent, uh, uh, let's say, more in strength. Yeah. But the lifetime will double. Yeah. As you can see, even if you go to uh, high performance 10 stranded, uh, price will be about uh, 240 or something with more uh, strength in your rope for 35%. Even with a double plastic compacted 10 stranded, uh, you're going to see that you end up with 40% stronger ropes. OK with the price which is uh, two and a half times, uh, but look at the lifetime. Yeah, It's going to be three times or four times, believe me, if the installation is correct. You're going to be surprised how long these ropes will last on your installation. The gain is the installation cost because you OK, you're going to buy a, a much pricier rope, but as you look into the table there, it will gain you one installation cost two installation costs, three installation costs. So your assembly costs, you know, you're, you're going to have less downtimes. You know? Your wear of the grooves will going to be minimum. You know? The only fatigue you're going to have is on the outer strands, so your core will stay intact. You need fewer 
lubrication on the uh, external uh, uh, strands only. And if you have an accident, accidents do happen sometimes, you support the overload because you're going to have stronger ropes uh, anyhow, and perhaps the rope will survive because it has all these different uh, properties inside the rope. Uh, and as you can see there in the initial cost and the effective cost, you can see when buying a high performance rope, yeah, you're going to end up with only one installation instead of yeah, general purpose ropes, which uh, won't last as long, and you're going to end up with three installations. So take care about the cost of your installation and anyhow, the high performance ropes will do the same job with a longer lifetime and only with one installation. Yeah? So I prefer high performance ropes. They're where the installation takes a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of workforce. Take it uh, uh, in very important installations who normally um, uh, will be a disaster if you have downtimes there. If you can plan, planify your, your changing of the ropes carefully, then I would advise uh, to use um, high performance ropes. That's the first chapter. Now let's talk about uh, rotation resistant ropes, non-rotating also mentioned and in French anti-giratoire. What is it? Why do we need these kind of ropes, constructions? I explain about the advantages in Langsley and the classification. What is a resistant uh, rotation resistant rope? Well, I already explained it. It's a rope where the core is in the opposite direction than the outer strands. Yeah? And it is used in one part weaving systems. So if you have only one part of a rope coming down yeah, for hoisting and uh, for great lifting heights like on mobile cranes and tower cranes. Yeah? Even at very high loads, yeah, you won't have a rotation moment in this kind of rope or torque. Yeah? Because if you load this kind of rope, the outer strands would like to open up, yeah, but the inner core is closing up. So then you have uh, a, a, a calibration from the rope itself, so it won't have a moment or a fatigue. So rotation resistant ropes, six and eight stranded ropes give under a certain load a rotation moment, torque, due to the helix form from the outer strands. That means that in, like I elaborate on that there, you see um, in a, um, a block with one sheaf or in a block with two sheaves, six and eight stranded rope, we give on each strand, we give a rotation, yeah? And this means that all these rotations are in the same direction. So if you put a load on your block, the block will turn. To prevent this, so you normally need to install a rotation resistant rope. So this rotation resistant rope, each strand will have no moment and your block will stay steady. With rotation resistant ropes, you have two kinds of rotation resistant ropes. If the moment or if the torque is zero or almost zero till about 80% of the minimum breaking load, we speak about the rotation resistant ropes a 100% rotation resistant rope. If it is almost zero or only till 40% of the minimum breaking load, we speak about a semi-rotation resistant rope. I explain this later. Yeah. How could you uh, identify if you really need a rotation resistant rope or not? Well, there is this for certain formula you can use. You can um, make this formula work to decide um, what would be the maximum lifting height. I explain quickly, if you have a six and eight strand rope in a certain constellation on your crane, you put some of these uh, different uh, um, uh, figures into this formula. You can see there S will be the um, uh, effective spacing between the different parts of your ropes. So normally these are the diameter of your sheaves up in your crane or down on the block. Yeah. 
Uh, you could also uh, uh, make an average of uh, both top and block sheaves. Yeah, so you put that in the formula. Yeah, then you have the diameter of the cable. That's little d. You put it in the formula, and then you have two constants. One constant is C1. C1 uh, is the uh, uh, if you have even parts in your uh, weaving, if you have even parts, and C1 is uh, uh, if you have uh, odd numbers of parts in your weaving system, uh, then you need the other constant. And constant number two is depending on the type of cable. Six stranded with fiber core, six stranded with inner wire rope core, eight stranded with inner wire rope core. You put all these into the formula and then perhaps you end up with, let's say, 20 meters. That means that your block will be steady till you drop it down to 20 meters. If you go down to 30 meters, then automatically your block will turn. So the parts will turn into one another. You can't work anymore. If you need so more maximum lifting heights, then in this situation, uh, if you ex excel the uh, uh, lifting height coming out of the formula, then you have to uh, use a rotating resistance rope. Yeah. In that case, uh, six and eight stranded ropes will only work till, let's say, 20 meters. Look at the formula. There is no load. There are no kilos or what into. So it doesn't depend on your load. It is just a constellation with the different uh, parts in your block. Rotation resistance ropes, let's uh, repeat. It is what? Core is reversed. Yeah. Why should we use it? You use it instead of where you have normally torque in six or eight stranded. You have semi-rotation resistance and rotation resistance ropes. It depends on the number of outer strands, outer wire strands and the construction of the core. Uh, uh, the one on the left side we call a semi-rotation resistance. You see all the different uh, strands are the same. Yeah, You have 12 strands on the outside and you have seven strands on the inside reverted. If you look at the one uh, uh, construction at the right, this is a really rotation resistant. Look at the core. It is very complicated. You have 16 strands on the outside. There the moment will be zero and the other, uh, uh, the semi rotation resistant, your uh, moment will not be zero and certainly not till 80% of uh, the minimum breaking load. So where to use? You use it in one part hoisting or you can use it in high lifting. Just take the formula, count uh, uh, what you need, and then you uh, normally will uh, have an idea if you use, if you need to use a rotation resistant or not. Where not to use rotation resistant ropes, where you have shocks. If you have shocks, yeah, you're gonna destroy the core inside, yeah. Don't use them if you have two small sheaves because your core will be damaged, as you uh, can imagine. If you have uh, this kind of rope going around a very small uh, sheaf, yeah, you're gonna uh, uh, damage the, the core, which is an inverted inside, so be careful. And don't use it normally because you think you need an, a stronger rope than a six or an eight strand. If you look into the, the specifications and you have a rope in a certain diameter, say, okay, I need a rope which is stronger. Don't just look at uh, 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 rotation resistant ropes. They're going to be stronger anyhow, but it's going to be core damaging or it's, it's not going to work on two small sheaves. My advice is also to use Langsley ropes, Langsley on the outside. So as you can see there on the picture, yeah, Langsley ropes. So you have a right handed uh, rope on the outside, but look into the, the strands itself. You have also right handed wires yeah, in your uh, in your uh, outside layer. It's gonna be a more flexible rope if you have Langsley ropes. You're gonna have a better and longer lifetime, certainly on multi-layer drums. And rotation resistant ropes are often used on multi-layer drums uh, in many layers, one about the other. So, I would give you now you an idea about all the different rotation resistant ropes uh, um, th there uh, exist. You have here also an idea about what we call semi rotation resistant ropes. 
there the moment or the torque is higher than zero, uh, could be higher than zero. The problem was years ago that somebody really ordered or wanted to have a rotation resistant rope, yeah, and they sold the guy a semi rotation resistant rope. So therefore we have this classification and that's why the ropes with a very complicated uh, uh, inner rope core are uh, now classified non-rotating class 1 or A in England or the non-rotating class 2 or B if you have a semi-rotation resistance. Let's say that uh, there is a very great difference in working with these ropes. Look, real rotation resistant ropes, they can be used with a swivel on your crane. The semi-rotation resistant ropes may normally not be used with a swivel eh? because uh, the inner core is inverted, okay, but in some cases you're going to end up only loading on the inner core. So never use a swivel with semi-resisting, uh, sorry, semi-rotation resistant ropes. It's very important. That's why if you ask at um, our companies a rotation resistant rope, just look on your certificate to see if you have a class A1 or a class 2B yeah, uh, uh, classification for your uh, resistant uh, rotation resistant rope. I have an overview from all the non-rotating anti giratoire rotation resistant ropes which are on let's say the European market. Look, they're gonna sell you all this type of ropes as a rotation resistant rope. Look at the different um, number of outer strands. You have there 16 outer strands, 18 outer strands, 15 outer strands. There are even with 12 Let's say only 12 outer strands, yeah, 15, 16, 14. Huh? The most important thing is how does it look on your inside? And you're not going to see it on the inside. You're never going to see the inside. But look at the different type, different constellations of inner uh, uh, rope core, yeah. So I say the number of outer strands, 16. And the number of inner strands, 19, will give you a good quality of a good non-rotating or rotating resistant ropes. But as you can see, with all these different kind of cores, yeah, prices can be very different. And also torque or moment uh, which end up in your uh, um, blocks and so can uh, be very different. Price will be different, but your rotation resistance will also be different. So if you have doubt about this, this uh, we can give you an advice what kind of uh, really rotating resistant rope you need. Anyhow, rotation resistant ropes, they can give you some problems and many times the block is also turning with the rotation resistant rope. Where does this come from? Where well, is a certain rule? If your block is turning without load on the block, your block is turning, then you really have a crane problem. This means something is wrong with the grooves of your sheaves or something was wrong when you put the rope on your crane. You put a rotation into the rope and that's why even without load, your block is turning. So I call this a crane problem, yeah? If the block is straight, yeah, and you put a load on the block, and then suddenly your block is turning, then I call it a rope problem, yeah? Because you put load on your block and you have a block which is turning, that means that each part of your rope will give a rotation. So there is a problem with your rope rotation, so with your rotation resistant rope. Just then look at a, a, a rope which, let's say, have another uh, a type of rotation resistant, a lower uh, uh, torque factor or something. Yeah. So this is a rule with no load on the block. Block is turning, grain problem. With load on the block and turning, it will be a 
rope problem. Very important to mention also with certainly rotation resistant ropes is that normally if you have the time, you need a running in period for this kind of rope. So after installation on a, a, a tower crane or on your mobile crane, you have to make sure that the whole rope will adjust himself in diameter so that the initial stretch will disappear. Your rope will come to its exact diameter and yeah, the rope will be set. Yeah, it will come to an easing point, let's say, in your sheaves and your drum. Yeah. And how you can do that? Well, you pick a load of about 20% what you normally take with uh, your crane and you route around. You ride around just using all parts of the rope going through your sheaves. Yeah. You do it several times and then afterwards you do it with 50% of the load. Yeah. So it's like an athlete which is uh, making or is going to make uh, an Olympic uh, performance. Yeah. You have to train your rope. Yeah. And then if every part of the ropes uh, are at ease, okay, then you start working with your rope. Believe me, if you do this, and not many people are doing this because they don't have time, you have a problem on your tower crane, quickly, quickly, we can uh, change the rope. Yeah, okay, the, the rope is changed. Okay, we're gonna work tomorrow with the tower crane. Yeah, they don't have time anymore, they're working. Problem is that there are certain parts of this uh, rotation resistant rope which work, other parts who stay on the drum. Then you go to another uh, uh, constellation, the crane is getting uh, 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 placed elsewhere uh, um, and perhaps higher or lower. That means that then in this kind of work, rope is coming from the drum which didn't work before yeah then you have this conflict let's say but if you do this running in hero believe me you're going to have 20 or 30 percent more lifetime on rotation resistant ropes this is very important yeah so do the running in think about an athlete and then you're going to gain uh, let's say a uh, lifetime and remember rotation resistant ropes they are more expensive so take care consider doing the running in that's it for me now. Um, next time we're going to talk about uh, inspection of wire rope, discard. We're going to make you uh, experienced <laughs> um, examinators of uh, rope or just to be certain that you can have a look at your ropes and think, OK, uh, this will end uh, not today. Well, we're going to be certain that uh, uh, ropes are still safe to use. Huh? We're going to speak about automatic uh, rope testing, so looking into the rope uh, uh, with magnetic uh, apparatus. So uh, that's uh, another uh, webinar coming up. Another one is the uh, ridging arrangements for sheaves, drums, diameters, blocks, hardnesses of uh, uh, sheaves and uh, grooves. Lubricating of wire ropes, when, why, with what, how many times and so on, okay, and uh, all different kind of end terminations that we can put on the road. Thank you for your attention. I hope uh, that uh, you looked carefully at uh, what we explained. If not, well, you can turn yourself to the taped version yep. and then um, if you have questions, you just uh, take contact with me or with all your different uh, companies in uh, all over Europe. That's it. Uh, Perfect. Michelle. Thank you very much, Ellen. Um, there are some questions um, and we still have a couple of minutes to go, so I will ask them to you and if you can. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> can you let us know what the disadvantages are of a double parallel stranded rope? Yeah, if you have double parallel stranded rope, yeah, you have to take care of uh, some uh, fleet angles. So that depends on how many degrees you have uh, coming uh, uh, out from um, uh, sheaves or going to drums. Yeah, um, we can have um, some problems with uh, double parallel ropes, which are not with the uh, plastic infill, but the plastic infill we do a lot of good. 
So uh, you know that uh, the maximum uh, fleet angle uh, for uh, ropes is four degrees. Four degrees is a lot, let's say. Huh? But normally with plastic infill, you can go to two, two and a half, three uh, degrees left three, and or three degrees on the right uh, side. So, but it depends. It all depends on uh, what this is the situation of the uh, groove also. And yeah, sometimes you know, double parallel will gain you a lot of lifetime. But remember with compacted and with plastic infill ropes, normally uh, they will do the job. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, another one. Um... Do you think that the compacted rope maybe reduce the live rope? Um, no, some people have the idea that when you are compacting the strand, yeah, you're going to end up with a strand which is already fatigued. Yeah. Um, there are some companies, I don't mention names, they don't, they don't do the compacting. They only do the hammering. Yeah, that means they make up a rope to, let's say, a certain diameter let's say 21 millimeter, and then they compact the whole rope. They don't compact, but they hammer the whole rope. So this means that they are going to crush all the outer uh, strands onto the uh, rope core. And this will give you fatigue, yeah, because you really uh, disformed, let's say, the uh, outer strands, and also you just put the, the outer strands in contact with the inner core. So there you're going to have a fatigue problem anyhow. Huh? So I prefer high performance wire ropes, which are just with compacted strands. You compact the strands, yeah? And then with these compacted strands, you make your rope. Yeah? You're going to end up with the rope uh, much rounder, yeah? compacted, but only the strands. So you're going to have a lot of advantages by using these uh, compacted strand ropes. And it all depends on, let's say, who is the rope maker. Yeah, I don't say you have very bad companies making uh, ropes, but every try, everyone tries to uh, <laughs> duplicate the original yeah, mm. or the inventor. Yeah, and some things can go wrong. You need to have this compactation into the fingers, let's say. Yeah. Next question. Okay. Well, let's there are on. a lot of more. So whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, no, uh, let's say about three uh, to do right now. Do you have an overview of the different discard criteria for high performance wire ropes versus conventional wire ropes? Yeah, it all depends on um, the number of broken wires. Yeah. So. Um, Normally, higher performance ropes will start from eight strand. Huh? Eight strand ropes give you eight times as number a number of um, uh, outer wires. Yeah? So in um, high performance wire, wire, uh, wire uh, ropes, let's say, you're going to have a lot of more uh, outer wires coming into contact with sheaves. That means if you have more outer wires, then you can have more uh, broken wires before discard. Uh, and as I told you, if you have in compacted strands a wire which is fatigued, it won't come out of the strand, so it won't damage his colleagues uh, when it goes through uh, sheaves. So normally you have discard on a certain longer period. Yeah. Anyhow, think about the uh, inner core, which will be still intact, or normally they will be intact. Uh, your layer, your plastic layer, will get a certain amount of wear also, uh, but if the plastic layer is gone, then only you're going to have contact between the outer uh, strands and your rope core. But normally, if the plastic layer is gone, then you're also going to have some wire breaks on the outside, wear or fatigue. So normally you're going to discard your rope from the outside and you don't have to worry about what's happening inside. Yeah? So 
generally you're always going to have a lot of more advantages with high performance should be advantages because your rope is uh, more expensive yeah. okay next question from uh Aldous. uh are high performance steel wire ropes useful for guide telecommunication mast difficult one yeah in small diameters then i think huh? you're gonna have anyhow uh, the advantage that it won't uh, uh, take water inside, yeah. But I think for uh, mast or something, there are going to be uh, more specified ropes, like um, um, completely stranded, um, uh, one strand ropes, yeah. Come, uh, let's say, cable clue. I think there you're going to have. Uh, um, a better performance. Remember that all these eight strand or ten strand rope, they have a certain stretch. Yeah, if you need it for antennas or something, this kind of rope will give, I think, too much stress. Yeah, Allez. elasticity in it. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? There are specially uh, developed uh, ropes, let's say for uh, antennas or for um, auban. Uh, or four things. The only thing they really need is a strength. Yeah, easy uh, uh, to make uh, certain interminations on it, and then there uh, there is no um, water uh, problem or rusty problem uh, on the inside. I wouldn't. If you can, you can use, but I wouldn't really use this kind of rope. They have uh, normally much more advantages as hoisting ropes, going through sheaves, going on drums in different layer. Yeah. Okay, let's do another one. I think it will be the final one uh, because of the time. Uh, could you say us if you recommend non-rotating rope for cranes, STS, ship to shore? Uh, non-rotating ropes for ship to shore? Normally not, you just use eight or 10 strand ropes. Non-rotating ropes only on, let's say, mobile cranes and um, tower cranes. Tower cranes, yeah. yeah. So for very high lifting uh, applications. Normally for uh, uh, ship to shore cranes, container cranes, use eight strand or 10 strand ropes in left and in right if necessary, or in right, just only in right, like you see a lot, that will uh, um, uh, work uh, perfectly. Huh? Uh, eight uh, stranded ropes compacted with plastic infill will do the job, certainly on container ropes. Yeah. Let's do one more. <laughs> why not? Um, why would we not always use a rotation resistant rope? What are the disadvantages of a rotation resistant Rope. Well, let's say a rotating resistant rope is. You have to take care of this rope. Yeah? Um, it is uh, more um, difficult to install, I think. Yeah, you need it in certain circumstances. Yeah, look at the different uh, type of ropes and manufacturers. They're all going to say they have the best rope and I'm not certain <laughs> they have the best ropes. Um, they are often used on uh, plastic sheaves also. Yeah, there's a whole discussion about that yeah, in blocks to save uh, a lot of um, um, loads uh, in your block. Yeah. And I know, OK, uh, uh, rotation resistant ropes, uh, you're going to need them where you use the formula. If you use this formula, you count it out and you have 50 meters, but your height is more than 50 meters, then you're going to have terrible problems with six and eight strand ropes anyhow. It's not depending on the load. It's depending on the height you really need. So and if the formula directs you through rotation resistant rope, then you need a rotation resistant rope. Yeah. On container cranes, you have normally eight or 10 strand ropes, yeah. But if you have uh, in your container crane up there, you have um, overhead crane, yeah? 
to, to, to pick up, I don't know, uh, uh, spare parts from down there, then you're going to see you only have, I, uh, let's say, a block with one or two sheaves. Well, this will normally have to be a rotation resistant rope. Yeah, but the other ropes, container or grabs or something, just use eight strand or 10 strand high performance, plastic infilled, compacted ropes, and uh, they do the job. We have about 99% of all the ropes in the harbor of Antwerp on container ropes. They come from Manus, and I think everybody is happy <laughs> with <laughs> the result. And if they're not happy, we organize a visit, we open up ropes, we, we, we analyze it, we advise it, we go further, we measure the grooves in, in many, 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 90% of problems with ropes. I'm going to tell you it's going to be about uh, sheaves, grooves of sheaves, drums, and things like that. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, time's up. It's 12 o'clock. Oh. Uh, there are some questions left, but we will answer them uh, in our follow-up email on our email to you. You also received the recording um, and uh, I think the presentation as well. You can share it with everyone. Thank you very much again. Uh, in the chat, we also have put in a evaluation form. If you have two minutes of your time, please fill in uh, to improve our sessions or not. Maybe you get a rate 10 this time, last time was a <laughs> nine. Um, so again, thank you very much for your time. And uh, uh, we will inform you also about the upcoming webinars and they will be after summer holidays. So I think will be September, October, etc. cetera. Um, have a nice day. Thanks. Many greetings from Eindhoven and until next time. Bye-bye. Until next time. Always bye -bye. at your service. Bye.